Alejandro would go outside and he would see 50 demons. What's going on guys? My name is Moldefe and this is the first movie of What If Tanjiro Had Dragon Breathing. I hope you guys enjoy and if you want to see more from this series because it is incomplete, uh, please hit a like subscribe and comment down below what you think will happen next because i'm sure it will shock you and i'll see you guys in the video unlike in the original universe tanjo's family didn't sell coal they sell flint a special type of flint this flint had the properties of a nitrogen blade you see the flint in this special mountain actually could collect sunlight. Because of this, Tanjo's family was pretty much seen as a very lucky one, as demons never came around them. Because of the special type of flint, in fact, the Demon Slayer Corporation would actually hire them to pay, like, give them flint throughout the year. Yeah. Because another property of this flint is that unlike normal flint and steel when they collide, it would cause sparks. Because of the collected sunlight, when flint and steel this time collided, flames would emerge. But there was one problem. You see, Tanjiro's family lived high in the mountains where the flint can gather the most sunlight and it was nearly a mile walk down. Tanjo's father used to do the mile walk, but he has been sick lately. Therefore, Tanjiro had to learn how to run down there and back up within a day, which was extremely hard for him at first, but his father would teach him a special breathing technique. Tanjiro throughout the years would adapt this breathing technique to suit him best unknowingly creating a new breath style. You see, Tanjiro realized a certain breathing technique and certain movements helped him burst down the mountain and up. The movements were more of a zigzag, the dragon step. Unknown to Tanjiro, he was also getting stronger younger as he walked down and up with a bunch of flint in, in a basket. Eventually, Years later, Tanjiro's father would die, and sadly, Tanjiro oh, would have to bury his own father in the backyard. Around this time, it was October 13th, Tanjiro walked by a black cat, thinking he'd be lucky. He would walk up the mountain as he was tired, and Somehow, some way, Tanjo's family was slaughtered. Tanjo would look around, looking at his dead relatives, blood everywhere. And unlike in the original universe, Nezuko was not gifted the power of a demon. She too died. Tanjo looked around to see if anyone stole any flint. Nothing. This was a cold murder, for seemingly no reason. Maybe a competitive seller. Yet, Tanjiro knew almost everybody liked his family. It made no sense. The Demon Slayer headquarters was notified immediately, and Tanjiro was taken in. Because of this, Tanjiro actually was taught how to properly breathe, quote unquote, and was taught the way of the sword. At first, he was taught flame breathing, but Renin Goku recommended that Tanjiro would be on his own. After two years, Tanjiro is now 16 years old. Tanjiro would spend another two years trying to perfect his own breath style. You see, Tanjiro both figured if a Nichiren blade and the flint from his family collided, what could possibly happen as they both collected sunlight? Tanjiro spent hours, no, 
months even, trying to create the perfect Nichiren blade and the perfect Nichiren sheath. Basically, the thing that holds the blade. You see, Tanjiro's sheath was a lot different than any other Demon Slayer, which made his breast style even more dangerous. The sheath, the sheath from the inside was coated in a, let's just call it Nichiren Flint. See, it was coated in Nichiren Flint. When a Nichiren Blade and Nichiren Flint collide, normally, Unlike sparks that normally happen if a normal steel and flint. No, it created solar colored flames. Pure flames of the sun. And Tanjiro was now 18 years old, making him a lot older than he did setting out on his original adventure. Tanjiro wanted to figure out who killed his family. But he, it was more dimmed down, as you could say. The reason for this was Ren Goku. Ren Goku taught Tanjiro one lesson that he could never forget. If a person is consumed by revenge, are they more different than a demon? Or could they even be considered a human? <laughs> Tanjiro shall not let his anger consume him, because all anger does is create wrong decisions. In a battle, if you let anger consume you, you make mistakes. Tanjiro adopted a motive motto, eat well, sleep well, live well, and let revenge take its course naturally. Tanjiro is now a demon slayer at age 18 with his new demon style, demon slaying style, a new breath style, breath of the dragon. Tanjiro created nearly 14 different forms just to complement his own blade, but I want to go over them here. Uh, how about a little bit later? Tanjiro first set up on his mission. He came across a village. It was during the day, so he didn't really have a lot to do. But all he could do was help out the people. The village smelled like cherry blossoms. And Tanjiro felt welcomed, warmed. Little did Tanjiro know the demon already had him in his trap. You see, Tanjiro realized more as the night came. The people were acting weirdly. Their movements weren't as fluid as a human should. It was almost like they were being controlled by a puppet. By, um, like they were all marionettes. Eventually, the smell of a demon came, but it wasn't like a normal scent because it was all over the place. When Tanjiro closed his eyes and sniffed the air, he saw strain come from every person's body, on every limb. But because of the amount of string, he couldn't pinpoint the original location. Tanjiro realized he was in a trap, and he could only do the one thing he could. He began to cut. He cut string by string, which took hours, and seemingly the string kept on going back to a person after he cut it. Tanjiro oh, thought that it was all useless until the demon finally showed himself. Tanjiro would recognize the demon's name as he saw a number in its eye. It was the new lower six. After a few years ago, the old lower six was killed by a yellowed-haired individual. 
The Tanjiro would refer to this demon as the string demon. It's how original. And the string demon did introduce himself and told Tanjiro his name. You must be the demon slayer sent to kill me. How weak. All of your cuts were pointless. It was like you had no motive behind any of it. I am Moji Ritsu. That's what I wrote down. Moji Ritsu. My blood demon art is string. I can manipulate anyone and everything. You already fell into my trap. Goodbye. Then Tanjiro could smell a large amount of string heading straight for his face. So Tanjiro used his first form of the breath of dragon. Dragon's blaze. I'll describe it now. When the user draws their sword, or well, when Tanjiro draws his sword, he would do a quick slash to the ground, and because of the Nichiren flint, flame would come out of the sword, or and hitting anything within its radius, which allowed Tanjiro to burn the way the string, the string demon, Mojiritsu, who was a taken aback by this. That's nothing I've ever seen before. Is that a new breathing technique you humans use? He would then relentlessly slash at Tanjiro. But Tanjiro would dodge as he would he whisper to himself, Six form wings of despair. He would leap towards a building and flip in midair, drawing his sword, slashing the string demon's head. Luckily, the string demon was able to collect enough string to be thick enough so Tanjiro couldn't. After that, Tanjiro would use the string as a platform to bounce off to recollect himself, as he would then charge at the string demon. He would then yell, then say, fifth form, rigid spines. He would leap at the opponent, or leap at the string demon and stab the arm of the string demon. He would then jump back and aim for the head once again. This time around half of the neck was around it was cut before the string demon could dodge. Tanjiro was pretty much toying with the string demon. As he would then whisper Second form, Smoky Abyss. He would dart around the string demon, which made the string demon have an illusion of thick smoke. This was based off the Mist Hashira's own techniques. Tanjiro wore long clothing, so it made it harder because of his own speed from the sea. He would then directly charge at the string demon's head and cut off the neck. The string demon would look at Tanjiro. This is impossible. You're telling me a demon slayer could kill before his death. Tanjiro would look at the demon and he would just whisper, all I feel is pity. He would continue on his journey. But before that, a villager who saw the event would stop Tanjiro. Please, please, rest. It's the least you can do. That demon, that damn demon. What he did to my wife, my kids. The least I can do is repay you with food. Or a spot to rest at least. But Tanjiro would simply just put a finger on his mouth. His own mouth, by the way. As he would then say, he would point at a nearby child sleeping, finally being able to rest, as Tanjiro would just wave at the man as he walked away. You can only thank me by trying to protect your own village. He would continue on his journey. Tanjiro would spot a burning 
village. He would begin to run towards his village as he realized that he was too late to save them. Tanjo would walk towards the burning village, see hands on the floor, a doll, kids' faces melted off. He would question himself why he was too slow to get here. As he's doing this, he would get ganged on by two demons, but Tanjiro would notice their assault before they could actually get to him. He would use second form Smoky Abyss, tricking the first demon and killing the second one. After that, Tanjiro would finish out the first demon with first form Dragon Blaze. After that, Tanjiro would mourn for the village that he was too slow to save. By the time day came out, the fire was still blazing, and his crow would tell him to head north to a city with a count of 50 demons. After a long journey, roughly around a week, Tanjiro finally made it to the city that was up north, the city of Tokyo. The bright lights practically blinded Tanjiro as he picked up a very thick scent. He can remember it. It was familiar somehow, but it wouldn't make sense to Tanjiro at the time because all the familiar scents were back at his house, his house back in the mountains. It didn't matter. Tanjiro kept pursuing whatever mission he was on. Eventually, when night came, the scent got even more thicker, to the point where it just bothered him. Because of this, Tanjiro would follow the scent, and it would lead to a familiar face, Muzan. Tanjiro would grab Muzan by the shoulder. You're coming with me. Muzan would look back, with children and wife in hand. I'm sorry, do I know you? Muzan would question Tanjiro, as he would see Tanjiro's earrings. You seem familiar. Tanjiro would look at Muzan with hatred in his eyes. Likewise, I'm sorry little girl, but your dad did something wrong. He's coming with me. The little girl would look at her father, quote unquote. What's wrong? She would ask. The wife would come up to Muzan. I'm sorry, he's not going with anyone. Tanjiro would close his eyes and reopen them. I'm sorry about this. He would chop the wife's neck, knocking her out, and a crowd would form. You... you hurt my wife, Muzan would say, making his best performance. How could you do something like this? Officers would start to come. Hey, what's going on over here? Tanjiro would show his sword. Look, I don't want to hurt anyone. But this man did an evil act, and he must pay for it. The kid would begin to cry. Mommy, what's going on? She would shake her unconscious mother. Tanjiro would realize what's going on. He doesn't want to hurt the kid like Muzan did him. But Muzan was right there. Then Muzan smiled. Well, I guess the act sucks then. Muzan would lash at every human around him. Tanjiro was, only, was the only one able to dodge, including a little child. Everyone around Muzan was practically dead. Well, everyone except for one person. The pest. The one with the Hanafuda, Hanafuda earrings. Tanjiro began to grow angry. You bastard! Tanjiro yelled. As he would charge at Muzan once he, hit the, once he landed on the ground. Muzan would smile. Come on, you don't possibly think you'd be able to beat me, would you? Tanjiro would be would unsheath his sword as he would say, First form, Dragon Blaze. Muzan would dodge. You pathetic human. Tan Muzan would backhand Tanjiro to a building. This is the most pathetic swordsman I've ever seen. How dare you walk around with those earrings? Especially near me. Muzan would slowly walk towards Tanjiro. I'm going to enjoy this. Muzan would change the form of his arm. 
to a spiky whip as he would lash at Tondro. Tondro would gather the strength to dodge. Their fight lasted for 13 minutes, but to Tondro it was like 13 hours. It wasn't really a fight anyway, it was more of Tondro blocking, trying to survive, until unfortunately he was too slow. Tondro would whip at Tondro. Muzan, Jesus, Muzan would whip at Tondro's eyes, blinding him. Tondro would cover his eyes. The blood was dripping from his face, like a waterfall. Damn it! Tondro would begin to uh, whine in pain. Where, where is my sword? Where is it? I can't see. Where am I? Mom? Tondro would begin to have a panic attack as Muzan would laugh. This is who they sent after me. A pathetic child. Muzan would then kick Tondro in the stomach. <laughs> Damn it! Tondro would roll over. He would curl in the fetal position. Where? Help me. Please, someone. Tondro would sniff the air. Iron. Iron, steel, that's where it is. Muzan would, would do an overhead whip at Tondra. But luckily, Tondra was able to smell where his sword was. He leaped towards it and then grabbed it, blocking the whip. Huh, that's strange, Muzan exclaimed. No matter, it's nothing compared to me. Muzan would assault Tondra with a bunch of whips and lashes. Tondro would sit there and take it, trying his best to figure out where the whips were, but the scents were delayed, you could say. Tondro would use second form Smoky Abyss and try and get away. Muzan would chase after, when Muzan realized that he can't keep going. There's a thick smell. He knows exactly who that is. He turns around. I'll see you later, Hanafuna boy, as he would walk away. Tanjiro would ask who's by him, what's that smell? Are you a demon? S stop, stop trying to... This Tamayo would hug Tanjiro. It's okay. You can rest now. Tanjiro would pass out. Tanjiro would wake up realizing he's blind. But even a blind man can tell he has scars all over his body. Whip marks, holes, hole-like scars. There were scars on his chest, his abdominal, his forearms, his biceps, even his thighs, and his shins. Scars everywhere from his battle with Muzan. Tamiyo would walk up to Tanjiro. Tanjiro, by mere instinct, would flinch. Don't, don't hurt me, please. Tamiyo would touch Tanjiro's shoulder. It's all right. I'm not like those other demons. I won't eat you. Tanjiro would shiver in fear. How do I know you're just not lying to me? How do I know you're just not gonna try and break me or something like that? Tamayo would chuckle. Well, if I wanted that, then why would I try to heal you? Tamayo would hold up a bowl. Um, well, I can't just say drink this, can I? She'd press the bowl up to Tanjiro's lips. Just trust me. She would lift the bowl slightly, and Tanjiro would drink the liquid. She would cough. What? What was that? Tamayo would answer. It was a medicine. It's supposed to help you heal a bit better. Tanjiro would ask. My sword. Where's my sword? You didn't touch it, did you? As Tamayo would say, I sheathed the sword for you. Here, it's right beside you, on your left. Tanjiro would feel for it, as he begins to cry. Damn it, damn it, damn it, no! Tanjiro would hold his hand over his face. Without my eyes, I can't see, and without them, I can't get their revenge. I can't avenge them, can I? Tanjiro would try and comfort Tanjiro. It's alright. You don't need your eyes to fight, Tanjiro. Tanjiro would ask, 
how do you I'm not I have a good sense of hearing let's just say that and I've heard about you sort of Tamayo would introduce herself my name is Miss Tamayo I guess you could say I'm Muzan's greatest enemy his worst fear I guess Tanjiro would be curious what do you mean by that Tamayo would explain that a hundred years ago, or well, hundreds of years ago, they used to be, well, close friends. And when she realized what Muzan was doing and that he turned her into a demon, she vowed to kill him after what he did to her fiance. And then, well, just recently, he killed a close friend of hers. We zoom into a picture of a man with a weird colored hair, black with a blue gradient. He was very close to me, and Muzan took that away. Tanjiro would begin to feel something sympathy as his emotions would kind of conflict each other. In his head, he would begin to go on and on about how she's a demon and she should deserve it. But it's not her fault, is it? It's none of the demons' faults for being how they are. It's Muzan's. And even more reason why he should try and kill him. But he can't without his eyes. Taimyo would then look at Tanjo's face and kind of read what he's thinking. Look, you can't go out there blind now. But there is still a way for you to fight. I've heard of a blind swordsman. I'm pretty sure he's the rock pillar. And yet, he's... Pretty much the strongest demon slayer anyone's ever going to see. Your lack of sight can't hold you back. Tanjiro would smile. Thank you, Miss Tamayo, was it? Miss Tamayo would shake her head. Now, get some rest, Tamayo states. Tanjiro would lay back down and feel for the blanket and cover it over his body. Tamiyo had to walk out the room and blow out the candle. Two weeks later, and during these two weeks, Tanjiro recognizes how nice Tamiyo is for letting him stay at her house. Tamiyo, Tanjiro begins to get used to being blind and in fact adapts to his, adapts it into his fighting style and learns how to gets his like smelling and sound like sense of sound like increased because of this Tanjiro practically can see more than the average human and pretty much had better eyesight without his eyes than he did with his eyes Tanjiro and Tameo pretty much get along and had a more of a best friend relationship than anything. Tanjiro would go into town, try and get food, and Tamaya would admit that she does need a bit of human blood, which Tanjiro does not actually mind giving Tamayo. So, um, yeah. Tanjiro and Tamayo were talking about how beautiful the day was when Tanjiro heard a sharp, piercing sound through the air. Get down! Tanjiro would exclaim as he pushed Tamiyo out the way when he saw a knife. Well, a strange looking knife. See, it seemed to be made out of air. Very thick air. As the knife pretty much went across his face, he could hear it hit the wall. What, what was that? Tanjiro would go outside, and he would see 50 demons in front of him. The demons would chuckle, laugh. Muzan said if we kill you, he'll give us more of his sweet blood. Some demon across the, let's say, army. Oh my god, let's just get to him. I want to kill him. I need that, that blood. It was so sweet. Oh, so savory. Tondra will be creeped out. Okay, that's, um, new. I thought demons don't work together. As one demon at the front would say, 
I'll do anything, even work with these low lives to get more of that blood. Let's get him! The demon exclaimed as the 50 demons charged at Tanjiro. Tanjiro would grab it, the handle of his sword. Oh well, Tanjiro would use the 13th form blazing world wind. He would unsheath his sword and do 360 degree rotations to kill 10 demons. He would then, once landing on the ground, would leap back to get some distance. He would then give himself some room as he would exclaim, 13, 14th form, burning flight. He basically, he would charge at the demons leaping. Then he would rotate his entire body, creating a more like a blazing tornado. He would then do multiple slashes to kill five demons. He would then back up again as a demon would try and slash at him. You're not going to kill me that easily. As Tondra would already cut his head off. I can see way better than before. I can see your imperfections. I can see every mistake you make in your battle stances. All you guys are weak compared to me. Tondro would chuckle as he would get into battle with two different demons as he would slash one stomach and hit the other. He would then throw his sword up and kick it as he began to do hand-to-hand -to -hand combat with the demons. The sword would land at the neck of a third demon as Tanjiro would do a double kick like a split kick to kick off two demons off him, then charge at the sword, grab it, do a front flip, and then as he land, he would cut off the head of a fourth demon, cutting off the head of the third demon. As the two demons charge at Tanjiro, he then do a full, do a full 360 degree e, e chop at the four, at the first and second demon. A fifth demon came behind him as he then and just simply did a like a back like a back spin then to cut off the head of a fifth demon who then do a back spring to get some distance again as three dem demons then charged at Tanjiro one shooting with those thick air knives out of his body. Tanjiro blocked the knives while defending himself against two other demons. He would sleep the leg of one demon, cutting off the head of another, and then throwing the sword like a giant, uh, like a giant, I was gonna say, like, it's like a disc, like a giant disc, you know? He would then cut the head off a third demon, charging towards where the sword was, cutting the head off of two other demons, jumping in the air, and cutting the head off of the, of ten demons. Five demons would then charge from behind him as he would look back. You sure about this? Tanjiro would exclaim as he chopped a leg, two legs off one demon, grabbed that demon by the head and threw it at another demon. The two demons colliding would jump back as Tanjiro would chop the head off of another two uh, sets of demons as the one who pretty much seemed to be unharmed would be split by the middle. And then, for good measure, Tanjiro would do more like a cross shape as he cut the head off, uh, as he cut the napes, practically, off the split demon's head. The two demons that are on the ground tried to get up, but they were already killed by Tanjiro. Five demons left, Tanjiro exclaimed. And as he then realized that he was incorrect, there were 15 demons hiding. <laughs> you cowards. As the last 20 demons all just yelled, Charge at him, he can't take us all at once. Tanjiro would smile. Come on, give me a challenge. If Muzan wanted me to die so badly, <laughs> he should have killed himself. Tanjiro would then breathe in and breathe out. Seventh form, Sun's Drake. Tanjiro would kind of do a zigzag-like motion as he seemed to take a form of a dragon, well, to his enemy's eyes. He would aim for the arm and the legs of the demons. 
demons and slash at circular motions while he charged at them. With this zigzag motion and the circular motion combined, he killed 20 demons almost in an instant. He would then sheath his sword. Weak. All of you guys are weak. The demons will all fall and sink. Tanjiro would drop the tough guy act as he began to inhale and exhale rapidly. Tameo, it's okay. They're... They're, they're all... Ooh. I forgot, sorry. Tameo would chuckle. It's alright. We then see two people. One with fiery hair and one with a purple scar. My child, have you heard the news? One said, the purple scarred one. The flame haired one responded, Yes, he took out 50 demons. It's such a rarity nowadays to see a demon slayer with such talent. The purple scarred one then continued, Have you heard of the issue? Yes, he was violating code. You're not allowed to spare a demon. The pink scarred one didn't reply. Yet, he does it anyway. In fact, it's quite odd that the demon doesn't kill him. Hmm. Could it be possible there's good demons? Rengoku would reply. Well, it's possible, but not probable. Either way, you have to take him, for take him in for questioning. Questioning. The purple old scarred one replied. I'll see to that. For now, get some rest. You have an upcoming mission to attend to. Thank you, master. The fl flaming haired one would bow and leave the room. Purple scarred one would look out the window. <sighs> Tanjiro Kamado. What a quite quite the mess you made. I'll see you soon, my child. A few days after Tanjiro's fight the fifty demons, Tanjiro was resting and training. His sense of smell was enhanced, and one day when the sun was setting, Tanjiro would hear an unknown man speak. So you're the demon slayer that slayed 50 demons. This place was hard to find, so please, tell me your name. I'll go first, I'm Kyojiro Rengoku. Tanjiro would notice that the man smelled like a nitrate and blade. He would ask, are you a demon slayer? This Kyojiro would state, your name please. Tanjiro would walk in front of Tomio's house. My name is Tanjiro Kamado and I must ask for you to leave. And Goku would notice Tanjiro's movements. His hand was edging towards his blade. Ah yes, the demon who is pro the demon slayer who is protecting and staying with a demon. You do realize that's illegal, right? Kojiro and Goku would edge his hand towards his blade. Tanjiro's expression had gone blank. And Goku would smile. I'm curious, you're blind, yet you were able to finish all 50 demons, you'd have to be very skilled. And Goku would draw his blade. Young Kamado, allow me to fight you. If I win, I'll kill that demon of yours. But if you win, that demon will be registered as a human, and this whole little incident can be forgotten. Tanjiro would draw his blade in defense. The demon's name. Is Tamayo. Tanjiro's first move would be his first form, Dragon Blaze, but Rengoku would parry the attack and leave Tanjiro open for a slash of the gut. Rengoku would go for this opening, but Tanjiro would stab the ground. Because of this, Rengoku's blade would reflect off Tanjiro's blade. Rengoku would be surprised by the look of the Tanjiro's blade, a dragon, he'd mutter to himself. Tanjiro would grip the handle of his blade and perform a halfway front flip and use pretty much all of the weight to slam against the ground. Rengoku would back spring to gain some distance. 
Tanjo and Rengoku would then run at each other and clash multiple times. They would run around the front lawn of Miss Tamio's house with the blades clashing and the sound of metal hitting each other. Because of this, and because of Tanjiro's flint and steel-esque blade, his blade would catch on fire multiple times. This would give Rengoku a bunch of burns around his body. This would go on for a few hours, when eventually Tanjiro would use his 14th form, Blazing fl Flight. Tanjiro would draw his sword, leaping at Rengoku. With the blade in front of himself, he proceeded to spin, which would create a flurry of a uh, fury tornado before <laughs> it slashed off Rengoku's head. Luckily, Rengoku would use his knife form to counter this Rengoku, and their blades would clash. Tanjiro would deflect Rengoku's blade, exposing Rengoku's neck. He'd whisper to himself, the opening thread. But Tanjiro would notice something. By going for Rengoku's neck, he left his entire torso open, and Rengoku's blade was heading for the target. Tanjiro and Rengoku would stop moments, inches before the target hit. Tanjiro and Rengoku took their breath, and a moment passed. Only one moment. <laughs> Who the hell is texting me? <sighs> I'm leaving it in because I hate my fans. Tanjiro and Tamaya would walk down to Rengoku's cell. Rengoku would instantly get into a fighting stance when he saw him. And Goku would ask, What, did you want to eat me alive, you wretched demon? Tamayo would roll his- Ta Tanjiro would then exclaim, If I had eyes to roll, I would have rolled them by now. If she really wanted to eat you, why didn't she do it when you were asleep? It would have been easier, on her at least. And Goku would look at Tanjiro. Traitor! Once I get out of this cell, I'll make sure you're properly executed. Tanjiro would then grab Rengoku's sword and draw it. It's nice, a cool blade, although I would say mine has a better design. As Tanjiro would shoot the sword and neatly put it back, Miss Tamiya would begin to speak. Look, I understand your hatred for what I am, but I'm not like the rest. I wasn't here to eat you, in fact, I'm pretty sure I healed all your wounds. Rengoku, now realizing what she said was true, all of his burns don't hurt. They've also would have faded by now. And Goku would look at Tamiya. What's your strategy here? What's your plan? To psychologically torment me? Tanjiro would laugh. Tamiya would chase Tanjiro while exclaiming, This isn't an appropriate time. Tanjiro would then smirk. And Goku would get up. Release me now. As Tamiya would go to get the key, Tanjiro would stop her. What are you doing? You know the second he gets out, he'll kill you. Tamayo would then whisper to Tanjiro. The only way to change their minds is by changing their heart first. Tanjiro would then allow Tamayo to get the keys and unlock Rengoku's cell. The second Rengoku got his cell open, he dashed for his blade, unsheathed it, and went straight for the neck. But then Tanjiro would stop it by unsheathing his own sword and deflecting. I might not have eyes, but I can see a whole lot more. I knew you're, yeah, I know you're afraid, but listen, she's not like the rest. I've been staying with her for weeks, months now. She hasn't killed me yet. In fact, she's only been treating me well. And Goku, who would now stop to listen. Look, I know I'm not gonna win this fight, but can't you tell? I know I'm not gonna win, but I'm protecting her anyway. She means something. Besides, she knows how to end all demons. And Goku, now shocked, would hear Tanjiro out. Tanjiro explained what Tamayo Tamado explained to him. Muzan Kibitsuchi is the key. If he dies, all demons die. The only way to kill him is through poison. And she's working on a serum to cure demons. Tanjiro would also talk to uh, and Goku about his backstory. How this same Muzan Kibitsuchi killed his entire family. How the second he saw Tamayo, he wanted to kill her, but then realized she was a nice demon. 
a nice person and a, a good person at heart. Tanjiro and Rengoku would talk for hours. Rengoku even explained some of his stories. Tanjiro was going to take Tamiyo's lesson to heart. That's what he's always done and that's what he will always do. Instead of changing Rengoku's mind, he wanted to go change his heart. Eventually, Rengoku would exclaim, I should go back to the headquarters, inform them of Miss Tamiyo, and maybe we can work together to do something about Muzan Kibitsuchi. Rengoku, after a few days of healing, would leave off, bowing down to Tanjiro. As Rengoku would also exclaim, Oh, I'd like to, for you to come for a mission. Come to a mission with me. Tanjiro would ask why Srengoku would state, Well, people have been disappearing on a train. I kinda need your help. As Tanjiro would smile. He'd look at me at Tamayo, and Tamayo would nod. Alright, I'll go with you. <laughs>